All right, let's finish this off. <clears throat> All right, two examples that we had. Sorry, were you guys writing that down still? You guys got it? No, you all good? Yeah, perfect. Um, Joel, how do you go for part three? Part three? Yeah. Um, Any plants, you know, that give white flowers? Pea what? Pea blossoms. Pea, pea blossoms. Yeah. Cool. Are they pretty? I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know anything about flowers. <laughs> Let's be honest here. I do know that um, you can grow avocados, like, from the seeds. Yeah, like, I'm growing seeds. Oh, yeah? Yeah, how are they going? Oh, that's sick. How long does that take? Half a year. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's big brain. That's big brain. As in, like, I never knew you could just get stuff from the store and then just like grow them. Yeah. You reckon? How come? Oh, that's sad. Wait, so you need like the pure ones to um? Yeah, interesting. Where the heck do you get pure bananas? <laughs> all right. Um, but right, anyway, back to plants. I mean, back to binomial distributions. So um, again, we've got chances of success given here. Uh, so let's drop that down. And we've got our uh, probability of failure that we're not going to get any white flowers. What do we do next, Joel? Um, so pretty sure you end four. Yep, because there's four plants. Yep. Cool. So, and I still, even if it's like one, I still write that just as like a habit thing. So I know in the future, um, like where this is actually coming from. And like, cause you know, people often leave this off and stuff like that. Or they forget to do that when they're doing ones with more cases. You know, that's a pretty common mistake. So we want three of the failures. Uh, and how's the fra and, and actually, you can leave it like this. This is fine, um, depending on how they phrase the answer. If they say, you know, leave it in so many decimals or significant figures or whatever, um, just kind of be aware of that when you're doing that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Is it? Yeah. What is it? What was it? Sixty-four over two four three. I did not get that. Oh. I got Awkward. Thirty-two over eighty-one. I mean, there's no other way I can turn this in. Contestion. So we broke it. Was it 32 over 81? 81. Perfect. All right, cool. Um, OK, so how, again, how do we make these a bit trickier? Rather than just um, having the same form here, can we modify these? And you have in the next question, part four. Um, James, can you just summarize the key information? What do we, what do we have going on here? How many of them? 1% are a pack of 50. So 50 bulbs, yep. 1% are defective. 1% defective. Find the probability that there are non-defective in the pack. Okay, so this, there's two parts, right? Um, yeah. yeah, so part A. Now, I'm going to write this in a slightly different way. So the notation that they'll commonly use for this, if there's, um, there's non-defective, non essentially you want, um, if we choose our probability of success to be um, the defective one, it doesn't actually matter either way, but let's say that um, the probability of success is the defective one. So this is our P, right? Okay. I want there to be um, zero successes, if that makes sense, because I'm going to choose my defective one um, as a success. You can go the other way, whichever way you want, right? doesn't really matter. Um, but um, how would they write that? Well, they would write that like this, using our um, kind of, if you think back to probability density functions, we sort of introduce this notation where we have the p, which represents the probability. And this x is what we call like a random variable. So we're saying the p of x is equal to 0. Um, sorry? Oh, we, so, uh, we sort of started looking at that in the end of year 11 um, when we're looking at like, representing probabilities as functions. So we're going to look at that in, in advance um, this week at some point. Um, but that's sort of like the time between the two topics. Right? So rather than just looking at probability as like a fraction, we can actually represent the probabilities of everything as a function itself. So that's something that we'll look at. Yeah. But this is how they would write it. Because I want, for example, p of x equals 0. I want there to be like zero successes. So that's how they might write that question out. Yeah. Um, how could we do that? Well, this one we can just substitute in. Right? So we've got um, 50 of these bulbs. And I want um, zero of them to be um, defective. And my chance of something being defective is 0 0.01 or 1%. And so my chance of failure is 0 0.99 to the power of 50. Okay. That's my first one. What did you have for that? 
Sixty percent? Ah, just zero point. Yeah, sixty-one. Sixty-one percent. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> part two, though. Um, Eva, what does part two ask for? Oh, okay, that's right. <laughs> Angus, you get that? No, Joel. Yeah, yes. 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 Suck. Yes. Suck. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at least two bulbs. How would you write that in this same notation that I've created here? So at least two bulbs effective. So if, if, if x is equal to zero is my... Okay, so you could do that. So let's just write this out first. So p of... So what did I say? At least two? Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah. So x greater than or equal to two. Yeah. And then what were you thinking, Harry? Exactly right. So we can still incorporate our usual sort of probability techniques here. Um, that word at least, you tend to think of one minus the probability of that thing not happening, right? Um, or one minus, not that thing, but one minus enough of those events happening so that this condition is met. So the typical one they asked is, what's the probability of um, at least one? And that's 1 minus the probability of none, because these are complementary events. So what we need is the complementary event. So what Harry's saying is, OK, well, in this case, if I want at least 2, what's the, the complementary of those things? It's 0 and 1, right? Yeah, OK. So we've already got 0 there. So now we just need the probability of 1. So again, we can write that out. So our chance now for. Um, the defective one, we want one of those occurring. And the rest of them, we want them to be um, working, I suppose. That's 49 of those. Yeah, That's our chance for p of x is equal to 1. So it's important that you're kind of like actually explaining where these are coming from, right? And then so our probability that we can have at least 2. Let's get a new marker. It's done. Let's use blue. Is equal to 1 minus p of x equals to 0 plus p of x equals to 1. Okay. Okay, you can put that in for me. So always better to use the exact one. So I'll write out the full thing as well. Who's going to answer for me? Yeah, roughly. Deci some decimals. Zero point. Yep. Zero point zero nine. What? Nine. What are the rest? Zero point zero nine eight. Oh, 894. 0.0894. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah always doing the calculator display first, and then, yeah, that's roughly 9%. Ran out of room there. Cool. All right. Questions on that one? Not too bad? Okay. Not too bad. Great.